For the first time in over 20 years, thick snow has fallen on the remote isles of Scilly off the western tip of Cornwall. With the plains grounded, the famous winter daffodils, which thrive in the usually mild climate, seem almost as startled by the brief downfall as the locals. Most of these children have never seen real snow before. It's the final fling of an unusual winter, before the strengthening sun turns the islanders' thoughts to spring and the new season ahead. Up at the airport, everything is soon back to normal. And in the airfare cafe, business is starting to pick up for Nigel. Although most of his customers don't know it, this is the last time Nigel will be making his famous bacon butties for a very long time. He's handing over the reins to the inexperienced hands of his son, Greg. Yeah, I've got to watch him make a bacon butty, and I'll be telling him off every time he makes it, because he'll never make it the same as me. But, uh, no, he'll get there. He'll get there, one way or another. Make sure I've got bacon at the end of every night. Bacon and bread. Make sure there's at least a whole loaf out of First aid kit, everything you're likely to need is up here. After months of worry and indecision, Nigel's now off to the mainland for major surgery on his shoulder. He could be out of action for up to 18 months. It's vital Greg does a good job in his father's absence. The cafe is Nigel's livelihood on Scilly, and without it, he and Carol would find it impossible to stay on the islands they've grown to love. But there could be a complication to the plan. What sort of animals are the most common that you have in for anaesthetics? Just, just so I can do some reading up and kind of just get ahead a little bit before I come and see you. Greg's girlfriend, Sarah, is a veterinary nurse and is having to look for jobs on the mainland. Good girl. Sarah's been working for Heike, the cash-strapped vet, and would love to stay on the islands. But Heike can't afford to pay her. Oh. Sarah's had to tell Greg that her days on Silly may be numbered. Normally at this time of year, there's a sense of optimism in the islands as the days start to lengthen. This time, though, things have been overshadowed by the dramatic news that under the unusual Methodist voting system, their minister, the Reverend David, is having to leave the islands. For many locals, the initial shock has been replaced by anger at a system whereby a small group of church representatives have actually voted against the will of the majority. How this decision has been made, and I'm not really au okay, fait particularly with the process, but it seems to me that maybe some changes need to be made about how people are voted to stay or not stay. I don't know, but it's quite upsetting for a lot of people on the islands. The islanders have discovered that under the Methodist system, there can be no appeal. And despite many requests, no reason can be given for the decision over David's future. It was a secret ballot, this vote, so uh, who knows what's in people's minds when they vote. But people have different reasons, don't they? Possibly some people have a different approach to ministry to myself. Perhaps some people think I should spend more time in the church and less in the community, perhaps be less high profile. Other people might have um, different approaches to faith or the Bible for me. I mean, I'm not particularly uh, extreme one way or the other. Perhaps some people think I should be more, uh, uh, I don't know, fundamentalist. That's not the right word to use, really, but that, that might be one reason, I guess. Perhaps some people think I'm not radical enough. So let us uh, praise God together as we sing the hymn number 315, Hymns and Psalms, which you'll find at the... Sometimes your faith just, just doesn't fit with some people, does it? You can't please all the people all the time. That's just one of the lessons you learn in life. The trouble is you'll actually never know the reason, will you? No, um, people voted how they wished to in a, in a secret ballot and that's, that's the end of it, really. I don't ponder it too much because uh, you have to move on. David's now trying to put his own problems firmly to one side. He knows there's much to be done for the island community before he has to leave in a few months' time. You matter. You're not a doormat. You're not meant to be walked on by everybody else. You matter. You need your time. You need your space. 
We all need time and space. It's important, but not just for ourselves, because we are called, sometimes reluctantly, to look beyond ourselves to the needs of others. During the summer, the main island of St Mary's is linked to the four smaller inhabited islands of Scilly by a fleet of tripper boats, which ply their way to and fro all day, every day. The doyen of the fleet is the old Sea King, built in the 1940s and owned by the legendary Salonian boatman Fraser Hicks, the most laid-back skipper of them all. So this is the, uh, the ship. You see how wide the door is. The postman has a job to get the letters in there. <laughs> In the winter months, the boats are hauled ashore at the Porthlow boatyard to be renovated and repainted so they're smart and shipshape in time for the new season. She's quite an old lady now. She's, uh, she's 61 now, so, you know, she needs a fair bit of maintenance all the time, painting and uh, getting her licked into shape. Keeps me entertained, yes. Saves me uh, sitting at home watching the telly. <laughs> With the spring fast approaching, Fraser's put up a canvas canopy so he can work on seeking all hours, whatever the weather. For as long as anyone can remember, Fraser's is always the last boat into the water. But this year, he's determined things will be different. All the activity has come as a bit of a surprise to the other boatmen, especially Fraser's cousin, Joe Badcock. Yeah, well, he's, uh, he's been down early in the mornings and coming at 8 o'clock in the morning and Fraser's already down here some mornings and it's not like him. He, um, normally he's a bit more laid back than that and he's got the cover on under there now as well. Yeah, he's up to something. I don't know what, but he's up to something. Joe takes great pride in the fact that he's usually the first of the fleet into the water, but this year he's blocked in by Fraser's boat. Joe's keen to make sure there's no slacking from his cousin. If there's any delay, Joe won't be amused. Hey, what's going on there? Over on the mainland, and this part of the North Cornish coastline is perhaps best known for the old fishing harbour of St Ives. A few miles behind the town is St Michael's Hospital. It's another curious aspect of life on Scilly that this is a place particularly familiar to many Salonians. It's where they often have to come for operations that can't be done on the little hospital on the islands. Nigel's just arrived and is being prepared for theatre. He's about to undergo a complicated procedure to remove a section of bone from his shoulder and repair damaged tendons. Just to bear in mind, what are the worst possibilities of anything? Right. The risk factors are pain, infection, bleeding, mm -hmm. damage to nerves and vessels running down, which obviously we try and avoid, but... <laughs> yeah, I'd hope so. Yeah. But in any surgery, there's always a risk of clot formation in your legs or your lungs. Just bear in mind. Yeah. Sign here, print an email today, please. OK. Thank you. The Reverend David is hospital chaplain to the Isles of Scilly. So, whenever he can, he makes the extra effort to travel over to the mainland to give moral support to islanders miles from home. David! <laughs> to meet him. How are you? Thanks ever so much for coming. I'll take a pew. They don't do operations on Scilly, so uh, they have to come over to the mainland. You just accept it as part of the life, that's it. You just have to do it. Um, but yes, it can be awkward. I mean, um, it's more awkward, really, for um, family um, because, you know, they have to come and stay, they have to pay to stay somewhere if they've got friends somewhere. I mean, if you've got friends in Cornwall, that's fine, but if you haven't, or if, some, if your partner or whoever is here long term, you've got to pay, you know, a lot of money for flights and accommodation and meals and all the rest of it. So, you know, it all adds to the cost. People David's are... critics back on Scilly may not be aware of the hours the minister puts into this aspect of his job. No, it's brilliant. It's a real breath of fresh air to see somebody <laughs> from over there. Well, that's right. When you're over here, you don't, I know you've got Carol here, but uh, yeah. you don't get many visitors when you're... No, you can't just have people wander up and... No, that's right. So I really value that. Thank you. David, how long are you on the mainland for? Well, this News of the shock vote to end David's tenure on Scilly is having repercussions elsewhere on the mainland, not least down in Truro, at the headquarters of the Methodists in Cornwall. 
Head of the church here is the Reverend Steve Wilde. It's going to be hard for the person who follows David. It's going to be a really, really difficult appointment, actually. Yeah. Steve and his wife, Laura, are all too aware that there could be serious long-term consequences for the islanders. Of all the appointments in Cornwall, the appointment on the Isles of Scilly is the hardest one to fill. For some people, living on an island just isn't what they want to do. They, they want more freedom. They want to be more private. You, on, on the Isles of Scilly, it, Everybody knows what everybody else is doing, and that, that isn't attractive to a number of people. Uh, David has fitted in that like a hand in a glove. He's been perfect at that, but it isn't for everyone. And I've got six appointments to fill, and they're all important, but actually, when I go to the meeting, my priority is the Isles of Scilly. I've got to find... So if I don't find anybody for any of the others, I've got to find somebody for the Isles of Scilly. <laughs> If any of the islanders on Scilly had thought their minister would just lie low after the vote against him, they could not have been more wrong. Now that he's back home, David has a rather unusual appointment with islander Jackie Pritchard. So this is the dress. This is one of your dresses, and I think you rather liked that when you saw it, didn't you? And then you've got your feather boa. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. And then, <laughs> let's put this on. I think we'll have this one. In fact, David has surprised everyone by accepting the lead role in the island's annual pantomime. Give us a twirl. Mm. Brilliant. He's certainly not going to be put down by any critics who think he shouldn't be doing things like this outside the church. Do you like that? Oh, yes, I could wear, <laughs> I could wear this every day. Yes, <laughs> yes well, this is excellent. Mm. He's been in the panto once before, but only in a very small role. This year, as Granny Hood in the local production of Little Red Riding Hood, he'll have eight costume changes and be on stage virtually the whole time. After the Christmas and New Year break, the panto is the last big social event of the winter. Almost everyone goes. And there is another costume here as well. Costume maker Jackie is also a keen chapel goer who thinks David's being very brave after all that's happened. Fit you. So when he gets a knock, he's not the sort of guy just to lie back? No. A big hurt, but, you know, pick yourself up and start all over again. And this is what he's done, and I admire him for that very, very much. Because it is hard, especially in such a small community, very small community. But he had so much backing and so much love and affection when all this happened from the community. <laughs> How did you personally take it? Because you're very, 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 very... I took it very hard, actually, because I've had quite a lot happen in my life in the last few years. My husband's died, my mother, my father, my father-in-law, my cousin, my sister-in-law, all within two years. And this happened, and I just, I just went to pieces. And I think everything bubbled up inside me. And I think this was the sort of the straw that broke the camel's back. My friend is going. And the day after it happened, I just happened to be passing the house and he was going in, David was going in. And um, I said, David, I must see you. And he said, right, come in. And he said, don't say anything nice, will you? And I said, no, I won't say anything nice, but I, I, I've just got to say, I'm sorry. And with that, we both burst, in, burst into tears and we stood in the hall with our arms around one another. And I said, oh, David, what are they going to think if somebody comes to the door with you and I with our arms around one another? I said, I think we better go upstairs. And then afterwards I thought, what did I say? <laughs> it, was, it was just sort of, as I've thought about it, I thought, gosh, fancy saying that to your minister. <laughs> No, don't copy Granny. <laughs> so you're very close to him? Yes, he's been a very good friend and a very good listener. So you're going to miss him? I'm going to miss him desperately, as a friend, as a great friend. Very much so. Mm. Over on the mainland, it's time at last for Nigel's big operation. He knows he really can't afford for anything to go wrong. 
Any complications or delays to his recovery could end his idyllic life on Scilly. Surgery's due about two o'clock. I'm just waiting here now for them to call me in and down we go. Um, I haven't really given it too much thought, just sitting here waiting for it. Dave. All right, I'm doing. Pick you up. Okay. okay. Thank you. And your man. Hello. All right. Look, I'll take your wristband a minute. I'll take you who you are. Yep. Right. We've got Nigel Young. Yeah. C4977888. Okay. Are you ready for this? Okay. Thanks. Thank Cheers. Right. See you. Bye. 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 Cheers. Right. Yeah. Is he nervous? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's always nerve wracking to think, am I going to wake up, let alone how's my shoulder going to be? Everything that Nigel does involves some sort of activity, even on the post, as well as the cafe and uh, the gardening that he does. Everything he does revolves around moving that arm. So a lot, a lot is at stake, actually. I think I'm more worried than him right now. Anyway, he'll be fast asleep and away with the fairies. I'm quite surprised how anxious I am, actually. The operation itself might be just in a small area and might not take too long, but recovery can take months and months. In many ways, it's been great having Greg around. But yes, it really is. He came at just the right time. In fact, I just rang him to tell him his dad was just going to theatre. But what neither Greg nor his dad are aware of is that there's been an unexpected development at Heike's surgery, which could have dramatic consequences for them all. Some of the applications that I sent off, you know, I was looking at big hospitals and stuff like that. Uh -huh. um, well, I actually got some feedback from um, the one at Bristol Zoo. No. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> and um, they've actually offered me the position there. So. <laughs> Wow, um, is it the proper zoo? Yeah, like, pro proper zoo, lions, gorillas. Oh, I just wanted to jump at it with both hands, yeah. but there's that little thing just kind of, it's it's not just me it's going to have an impact on because, uh -huh. you know, Greg's going to be here for I don't know how long, helping with Nigel at the cafe. And an op like that doesn't heal overnight, and I was going to help him too, and I was going to be here to help you, and I don't want to be letting people down and just being really selfish about everything um, so I kind of not just asking your advice as a boss but as a friend do you think I'd be doing the right thing by by taking I think it so. no it's something you have to do it you will never forgive yourself if you don't so basically go for it okay yeah You look very pleased. I am. I am really, really kind of shell-shocked, to be honest, because this is the job that, when I first got into vet nursing, this was the, the type of job I was aiming for, coming out of a zoology degree into vet nursing. I was like, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. Well, and, and what does Greg think of all this? Well, he knows I applied for it, but I haven't actually told him about the offer yet. So I'm... You haven't told him? I haven't told him yet. It's... He knows that this is what I've been working for um, and it's just kind of, I don't know how it's going to impact us if I take this job, if I go, um, there would be the opportunity to, to come with me, there's accommodation available, but I think it will come as a shock because I, I didn't think in a month of Sundays that I was going to get this job, so to be offered it was, yeah. A shock for me, so I'm guessing it will probably be a shock for him as well. My old man said, follow the van and don't dilly dally on the way. Off went the van with my home pack in it. I followed on with... It's a crisp winter's dawn over Scilly, 
and everyone's up early, busy with their own particular tasks. Lost the way and don't know where to roam. No, you can't trust a special like the old time copper when you can't find your way home. Down at the Portolo boatyard, it looks like Fraser's making great progress in getting his boat Sea King ready for the new season. Usually it works out I'm not ready, but uh, I'll surprise everybody this year and be ready. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Including me. <laughs> No good being last all the time. <laughs> so we'll we'll see how lucky we are. The cover's off, and Seeking is looking smarter and more ready for action than ever before. Joe's hugely relieved. Fraser's done what he promised. He's desperate to get in the water, all ready for the new season. Yeah, <laughs> we can't go anywhere until I've gone. <laughs> And he's already finished, so <laughs> he's just standing around watching me paint. I suggested to him he could give me a hand, but he didn't think that was a good idea. <laughs> Fraser's also keen to do a quick test of the engines, which have lain idle since the end of last season. So there's your throttle. And then we have... Well, that's promising. We're making the right noises. And then... She should go, oh yeah, and nothing happens. What should be happening now, Fred? <laughs> the engine should be running. Oh dear, it had all seemed so promising. What the hell could that be then? That could be, that could be a, a relay. It's never simple here, is it? Which is... Uh, Let's try that little baby, see if that one goes. It's all a bit of a blow to Fraser's pride. If there's a major engine fault at this stage, there's no saying how Joe might react. So that's that. Oh. Oh. Just around the bay from where the boats are launched, well, that came quite close to being almost not bad. So we'll try it again, shall we? But this time much louder. I'm Granny. And with opening night fast approaching, Granny Hood is putting in all the hours that God gave to wowing the audiences. Now, now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go and finish a job I was in the middle of yesterday that I started last week and I promised I would do last month. David's very conscious of the fact that all eyes will be on him. After all that's happened, the one thing David really wants to avoid is falling flat on his face on stage. Up at the Airfare Cafe, Sarah's broken the news to Greg about the job offer at Bristol Zoo. I mean, what an experience to then have and the possibilities that come from working at a place that does conservation and exotics. And... I guess it's like <sighs> a job in a lifetime. But... It is, it is. And this is one of the reasons why I got into veterinary nursing. This is the job that I've been waiting for and it's kind of unexpectedly landed here and I'm kind of a bit, yeah, a bit thrown by it all really. And... Are, you, are you excited and keen about this job? Yeah, this is something I'm really keen to do, and it could be a whole year. It could be a whole year at Bristol Zoo. Down in Hughtown, it's almost time for the opening performance of Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> Granny Hood is looking a little tense. How are you doing, David? Very glamorous, very nervous, but I should be all right. You'd be all right. No different from standing up in a pulpit, is it, David? Well, no, a bit more colourful, possibly, yes. but otherwise, it's no. One thing David is desperate to avoid is his departure causing a big split in the community. The panto is the first time many of the islanders will have seen the minister in a public role outside church since the vote against him. And he's keen to show them that he's risen above any of the hurt he's felt. So are you going to have to look for a place to stay? 
No, no, the zoo has like a, an apartment across the road from it, just a, a bedsit type apartment that they can offer me at a lower cost rent than the kind of the surrounding area. So we'd be right next door to a park. They have a park there as well. You can go jogging in the morning, do your healthy stuff. But uh, it means that I'm going to have to leave here sooner because I've got to go home, I've got to pack up all my stuff and then move it to Bristol and then unpack it and then start this job. And would you, I don't know, that might mean that we're apart for a little while. Uh, right. So, um, what do you think about it all then? Down at the Panto, it's 10 minutes to curtains. And David's amazing transformation into Granny Hood is almost complete. I'm really, really proud. In rehearsals, I think he was very reserved. And we were a bit sort of thinking, well, you know, how's he going to manage this? I'm proud of him and of everybody, but very proud of him to come out and do this. Both Jackie and all David's other island supporters are hoping and praying that their minister will be able to pull it off. In the next programme, as Heike and Alistair's wedding plans start in earnest, it's a big day as Heike meets the in-laws-to-be. They live here the whole year round. Their name is Gracie. But what will they make of the eccentric German vet? The awful thing is they have a terrible breath, like this rotten fish. <laughs> Sarah leaves silly for a new life amongst the wild and exotic animals at Bristol Zoo. How are you feeling, Sarah? Mixture between terrified, which is the majority at the moment, and excited. But is Greg going to join her? The Reverend David is on hand to lend an ear. Yeah, Sarah's a great girl. It's just there's also a lot of reasons I would like to stay as well. We'll stay here on on Silly. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got a choice to make, really. Mm hmm On the Isles of Scilly, the Methodist minister, the Reverend David Easton, has surprised everyone by taking the lead role in the annual pantomime. How are you feeling, David? <laughs> Very nervous, but I should be all right. You'll be all right. No different from standing up in a pulpit, is it, David? After the shock vote to ask him to leave the islands, David's many friends, like Jackie, think he's being courageous. I'm really, really proud. In rehearsals, I think he was very reserved. We were a bit sort of thinking, well, you know, how's he going to manage this? Very proud of him to come out and do this. With the new season not far away, the legendary boatman Fraser Hicks is having a spot of bother. She should go, oh, yeah, nothing happens. What should be happening now, Fred? <laughs> the engine should be running. Fraser's blocking in some of the other boats in the boatyard, and if he can't get things moving quickly, he'll be very unpopular. Oh. And the young vet nurse Sarah's future with her boyfriend Greg's in the balance after she tells Heike she's leaving the islands. It's not just me it's going to have an impact on because, you know, Greg's going to be here for I don't know how long and I don't want to be letting people down. No, it's something you have to do it. So you reckon I should take it then? Absolutely. Just, yeah. just mm -hmm. go for it. Then. Because you will never forgive yourself if you don't. OK. Yeah.
30 miles off the west coast of Cornwall. And tonight is a very big occasion on the Isles of Scilly. There we go. That is lovely. Thank you so much. Nerves are tense. The islanders have spent much of the long winter months looking forward to this evening. It's opening night of the annual pantomime. And tickets for Little Red Riding Hood sold out weeks ago. But tonight, 